Time for the talk show. Get in the car, let's go. The commuter talk show. Come on, all y'all, let's go. Been waiting all day. Come on now, let's celebrate. Open the door, take a seat, it will be great. The commuter talk show. Welcome back to another season of the Commuter Talk Show. We hope you had a great, great summer. Hope you didn't let those long, grueling, traffic-filled commutes get to you too bad. And we've got an exciting season coming up. A lot more guests, a lot more antics. And we're kicking it off here today with a great actor, born in New York, trained in New York, his career has spanned more than 20 years. He can be seen in more than 70 films, plays, and television shows. One of my favorite actors. He's appeared in No Man's Land, The Cutting Edge, and Eight Men Out as the great shoeless Joe Jackson. Yes, I'm talking about actor D.B. Sweeney. And we might add now, he's actor, writer, producer, director D.B. Sweeney. Having completed two films of his own, Dirt Nap and Two Tickets to Paradise, which are currently on the film festival circuit. And we're doing something a little different here today. DB needed a lift to the airport, so we're gonna pick him up, get him in the car, interview him, and take him to the airport. So we hope you enjoy the ride. Let's go find DB Sweeney. Welcome to the talk show. We got that. Little special breakfast? We love the special breakfast, right up my alley. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sure. Very nice of him to bring me my breakfast. The commuter is always hungry, and, uh, you know, I'm gonna do that right now. Mm. Good stuff. <laughs> All right. That. Awesome. That's it. No tricks. Oh. Okay, since I'm, I'm horrible with directions and all that, Feel free to navigate me and tell me which way to go. Make, we make it super easy. You just go straight down Lincoln. And run you right into the airport. Which way is Lincoln? No, oh, this is Lincoln yeah. right here. Yeah. Perfect. Always hard to leave the family. It's getting harder. I've traveled too much lately. All right, so now, so you're headed to... I'm going to Toronto for the Toronto Film Festival, and then I go to uh, New York for a couple of days. Now, what film uh, are you working on? Are you, have you, are you promoting at the Toronto Film Festival? Two Tickets to Paradise. Okay, now that was the same one where we met at Action on Film that's Festival right. that you had there. Yes, yeah, right. So you've been uh, making the circuit with that one. The never-ending tour. I've been, uh, I've been all <laughs> over the place, and you know, I financed the movie with my own money, so uh, so it's uh, you know, there's no there's no end in sight. It's, uh, I'm going to keep promoting until everybody knows about it and everybody's seen it. That's all. He, that's all you can do. We're, we we try to do the same thing. Tell us a little bit about the movie. All right, two tickets to paradise. That's the one. Two tickets to paradise. I uh, wrote and directed it, and it's a story of, and I produced it with my own money. And it's a story of three guys who, when they were 20 years old, they were the kings of their little Pennsylvania town. A uh, football player, uh, the valedictorian of the high school, who's now in an Ivy League school, um, who was then at an Ivy League school. And I play a rock and roller who's just starting to work in some clubs and make a name for himself. When the movie starts, they're on the verge of 40, and they're completely mediocre. They've never left their town. They've never accomplished anything. And the comedy comes from the fact that they're completely bewildered that they could have fallen so far in the social strata of things. So uh, one of them, uh, who doesn't care anything about football, wins two tickets to the college football championship game in Florida. So they jump on the road, and they uh, they make their way to Florida, you know, boozing, misbehaving the whole way. <laughs> Sounds like a good, good, funny movie. Yeah, it's, it's meant to be, uh, it's not meant to be any kind of, uh, you know, uh, Hollywood tell you how to live your life movie. It's, right. a, it's just an old-fashioned, the kind of movie you would have seen in a drive-in. Right. You know, good laughs, good characters, and, uh, you know, you believe the people in the situations. My biggest beef with Hollywood comedies these days is it's always Ben Stiller, it's always Will Ferrell, it's always, you know, these comedians who are never really characters, they're always these comedians, and you right. feel like they're in a sketch. So uh, I remember when there were comedies back in the day, you know, like Diner or, you know, there's so many other examples that you could bring up sure. where, where you actually believe these characters in these situations. And the comedy comes out of that. So I feel like Hollywood's gotten really lazy with the comedy writing. And, uh, you know, Brian Curry, my partner, and I are trying to do our little bit to right. maybe raise the bar. 
Sounds good. Now, how, how long was the, the process from the time you wrote it to the time you actually started shooting it? Well, we started writing in 2001. Um, some friends of mine were firemen, and uh, they were going to funerals every single day in the wake of 9-11. Uh, they didn't have enough honor to bury everybody, so one blustery night in December, uh, we're sitting in a bar with these guys, and every day they were going to funerals every day and then to the bar. I said, you guys got to take a night off from the bar. You know, why don't you go to a movie? And they looked at each other and go, movies? Nobody makes movies for us. Mm -hmm. And a bell went off in my head, and I thought, you know, it's really true. I mean, once you turn 30, you don't exist as a viable demographic to Hollywood. So everything's sort of aimed, you know, dumber and younger, uh, you know, at, at the uh, teenagers. So, uh, and I think teenagers are smart, by the way. I think they'll go to movies about people 40, 50, 60. Uh, they'll go to movies about people that are 10 years old, and they just want a good story. So the idea right. that they have to see movies about themselves is such a condescension from Hollywood, but... That's the way things are. Sure. Anyway, we took the movie around, we took the script around, we had a lot of interest in it, people wanted to buy it. But when you haven't sold a script, the amount of money you get for a script is not that much. Um, you know, we could have gotten 100 or $200,000, which sounds like a lot more money than it really is once you pay agents and lawyers and split it in half. Okay. And we spent two years writing this thing and it meant a lot to us. So at that point, we, uh, we decided to try and, uh, you know, some other avenues, alternative financing and so forth. And it was a lot of work and a lot of lunches where people really weren't gonna finance the movie but pretended they were and finally I just got to the point where I said you know what I'm gonna sign my house over I'm gonna take out some loans I'm gonna do it myself so we took the uh, 27 million dollar budget that had been prepared by one of the major studios right and I went through it with a red pen and I just <laughs> crossed things out makeup trailer <laughs> right. um, uh, um, costume designer casting director no thrills and just, yeah no, and even a lot of the essential things went because we just had to be able to make the schedule and sure. ended up making the movie for about a million six. We took it out to some film festivals, did well. Uh, but the film festivals, I didn't know much about that world. I didn't know how important it was to preserve your premiere for one of the big film festivals. And I was using the film festivals as a way of sort of market testing my movie. Because sure. I didn't have any uh, you know, money for Nielsen Group or anybody to, to, to refine the movie. So after five festivals, which we won prizes at four, um, the last one was the Savannah Film Festival. We won the Best Picture at Savannah Film Festival. And, in front of 800 people, I went up there to get my award, and, I, and on the way to the stage, all I could think of was like, I got a lot of work to do, the movie's not done. <laughs> so I went back and shot another week, and then another two days, right. and uh, re-edited the movie, retitled the movie, Two Tickets to Paradise, re-scored it, re, you know, just changed everything, remixed it, really did a complete new post-production process, and then took it out again about a year ago, and uh, well, I guess about a year and a half ago now, and uh, immediately won several more film festivals, Vale and so forth, and then, uh, but there was no theatrical deal forthcoming that really made sense so I decided you know what like the rest of it I'm gonna try and make the best financial decision so I went straight to DVD the movie's gonna be on Showtime starting in January you know it's 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 having it's sort of like the tortoise and the hare movie right it's building up ahead of steam now it's taking a long time but everybody that sees it really seems to enjoy it and uh, it's been a great great experience for me I've learned so much about the whole process of preparing a movie I already knew a lot about shooting movies but I didn't know much about post-production of movies so uh, it's, been, it's been a great experience for me all around. That is. Now, shoot, shooting uh, low-budget independent films is something that's, that's right up our alley, too. And we certainly can uh, appreciate all that, that it takes to do it. Now, someone who's worked on the big-budget studio films, low-budget independent films, you have a preference now? Well, sure. You always want to be on a big-budget movie, have a big, fat dressing room, and get paid a lot of money. <laughs> but, you know, it's... Uh, so, you know, the movies that Hollywood makes are, are more increasingly conventional. You know, I mean, everybody talks about how great Batman was this summer and The Dark Knight. And I thought it was bloated. And some of the acting was good, but I, <clears throat> I didn't think it was anything great. And uh, Tropic Thunder is the other big movie, I guess, from the summer. And I didn't think that was particularly good. They're just these big, fat movies. Right. And uh, so, I mean, would I love to be in one of them making a lot of money? Yeah, sure. But, uh, but... I don't want to be the third guy on the right in one of those movies, not making a lot of money. Right. I'd rather be uh, at the center of an interesting story, an independent film, or, you know, it's no secret for the last 10 years or so, the TV shows and increasingly cable TV shows is where all the best writing is. Yeah. And since this is one of our longer segments, we're going to break it up into two parts. So tune in next time on the Commuter Talk Show to see if we get DB to the airport on time. Commuter out. The Commuter Talk Show. Oh.